This is a quick video that focuses on resetting to factory defaults and HMAX device. So there are basically two ways to do it. We can use the shell or we can use the GUI. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do both. I'm also going to show you how to alter this default configuration however we see fit. For this, we need to root account to make permanent changes to these files. The default for the configuration files is the running config folder, which is basically the same as the slash config. Remember, we're running Linux underneath. The default configuration file is stored a little bit deeper, which I'm going to show you a little bit later on. So using the browser, let's say we made a mistake. We want to reset the def factory default for whatever reason. You can go down here to system and you can scroll down and you can reset the default. That's basically all you need to do to reset this device using the browser. If you want to use the SSH, then we need to copy a file. What are we copying? The config.boot.default file. We're copying this into the config config boot. This is basically the startup configuration. And after we run this command, the edge router will uh, basically ask us to reboot because then it can loot, load the startup configuration into the running configuration, which is currently active. So this is basically just a file sitting in, in the opt viata, et cetera, folder. So if I copy this path and if I do it, ls minus l and copy this path i basically just see it sitting here and we can alter also alter this file however we see fit so i'm going to come back to that a little bit later on so what ha actually happens after we make a change if we do configure and we say set system or set service telnet whatever we want to make a change it should compare and we can see that i added this to the running configuration if i try to exit I get this first warning, commit is, I cannot exit configuration modified. This basically means that I have to commit this configuration. If I exit now, I will get another warning, configuration changes have not been saved, meaning that this is the active configuration, the running configuration. And if I reboot this device, all of my configuration changes will be lost. So that basically tells me that I have to save. So if I just enter in save, it basically says saving configuration to slash config slash config.boot this is the startup configuration file so if i go in here and if i do ls minus l and i just enter in this path it basically shows it over here that's the startup configuration file we can also load from this file let's say we uh, we made a lot of changes let's say uh, we want to enable something set interface ethernet e1 10 one slash 24 uh, address forgot that and let's say I do a show compare so this is now my running configuration let's say I made a whole lot of changes and I basically just want to roll back I can also just do this load uh, config boot so let's do a commit and then I can load a config dot boot and I can see that the difference is that I'm removing this configuration again, and then I can commit this again. That's basically how that works. Instead of you just pressing save, which saves it to this file, we can also save it to something else. So this will not be loaded. The only thing that will be loaded on startup is the config.boot file. So if we change this name, it will not be loaded. It will just be sitting there in this uh, config folder. However, we can make changes to this file using uh, vi for instance if i do vi and then uh, let me go slash config and then alternate config let me copy this for a second right now we can just edit this file so let's say i want to make a change let's say under this uh, interface i want to set address 172.16.1.1 slash 24 whatever it might be press escape and i can write if I do a cat right now of that same file, I can see that this change has been made. So if I go back in configuration mode and I say load alternate config dot boot, if I do a show compare, I can see that this change has been made and I can commit this afterwards. So whenever you use the load or the save, it just automatically goes to this config folder which is basically the same as this running config if i let's say if i do a show file or show system file i think it is or let's just do delete file 
if I tap complete this, I get this running config folder. So that's basically the same folder as uh, the slash config. So let's say we want to make a change. Uh, like I said before, we can use the VI. So if we want to make a change to this factory default configuration, we can do that just fine. So before I do that, let me go to the root shell. You do that with sudo minus I. And if we use the sudo, we can actually tap complete a lot of this stuff. So if I go to my uh, normal user right now, I can't tap complete any of these folders. However, if I go to, uh, to the root, I can tap complete all of these folders. So that's a very handy feature to have. So if I want to edit this device or edit this default configuration, I can just VI and then edit that exact file. It's just basically just a text file. So that is pretty much what I've done already. I've added this address DHCP on Ethernet 4 because I'm always rebooting and resetting this device and I ju just want to get an uh, automatic address instead of changing my adapter all the time. So if we make changes to this and we can make any change that we want, basically when we reboot the device through the GUI or through the shell, doesn't matter, it will get our altered config. So let's say I want to make a change again and under this Ethernet interface, I'm also going to set the address 10.0.0.1/24 and escape and basically write quit. So if we do this and let's cat this file, we can see that our change has been made. So after I copy this file back into the config.boot, my changes will be reflected when I restore the device. So that's a very handy feature to have, in my opinion, especially if you're always resetting this device if you're using it for testing. So that's basically it. Thank you for your time.